Okay, question number six from the sample assessment paper for the International A-Level Pure Mathematics 1 paper. This was a sample assessment paper that was put out by the examining board, as in, seeing as it's a new syllabus. Now, question number six um, shows a sketch of the curve C with equation y equals f of x. So they didn't tell us the actual equation. It looks like it's some sort of a quadratic equation. Um, the curve C passes through the origin and through the point 6, 0. And the curve C has a minimum point at the point 3, minus 1. Okay, that's a minimum. On separate diagrams, sketch the curve with the equation f y equals f of 2x. Okay, so now. And also B, y equals f of x plus p, where p is a constant and p is between 0 and 3. On each diagram, show the coordinates of any points where the curve intersects the x-axis and of any minimum or maximum points. Okay, so first of all, let's deal with part A, of course. So part A, we've got to draw y equals, let's have a look at it, f2x. Okay, so this is uh, where you have multiplied um, inside the function by 2. So it's, you've, the x has been replaced, the x in the original function has been replaced by 2x. Okay, so this x has been replaced by 2x, so it becomes f of 2x. Now, whenever you have a multiplication, when you're multiplying uh, the function by a certain number, it's, whether it's inside or outside, it's always got something to do with a stretch. Okay, if you're multiplying outside the function, like, for example, it, it was this, then it's got something to do with a vertical stretch. If you're multiplying inside the function like this one, it's got something to do with a horizontal stretch. Okay, so this has got something to do with the horizontal stretch, meaning the x coordinates are affected and the y coordinates remain the same. Okay, now how are the x coordinates affected? Well, when you're dealing with something like um, f of 2x, it's always kind of like, when it's inside the function, it always acts a bit, you can say, strange, opposite what you might think. So instead of multiplying the x coordinates by 2, you multiply them by the reciprocal of 2, which is a half. So basically, for this, you've got to multiply the x coordinates by 2. Okay, so you can, I can write it like this, by t half, sorry. Reciprocal of 2. So you can take the x coordinates, the x coordinates, okay, are multiplied by a half, the reciprocal of 2. Okay, so let's look at the coordinates. You have 0, 0. Well, that stays the same. Okay, that stays the same. And then you have um, 0, 6. Well, the x coordinates, uh, sorry, you have 6, 0, you have 0. So you have 6, 0, not 0, 6. 6, 0. Okay, you multiply the x coordinate by a half, it's going to become 3, 0. And then you have the turning point, which is at 3 minus 1. So that's going to become 1.5. Multiply the x coordinate by a half. 1.5, the y coordinates stay the same. So those are the new coordinates of those points that we have. So we can draw a sketch of the graph over here. So you have your y-axis, you have your x-axis. You don't have to go too much in that side. Okay, <coughs> we have our origin. And this time it's going to cut through three, um, it's going to cut through, these are the points that we have to think, three zero and 1.5, so you've got 1.5, and you've got three, 1.5 minus one is where it turns, okay, and it cuts through three as well, so it's going to be, this is right in the middle of those two actually, so it's going to look something like this, it's basically going to get squished, squashed, it's a stretch, but it's been squashed. So this type of shape, try and make it as neat as you can, as realistic as you can. That's a bit, I don't like the way it looks there. Mm -hmm. It's just a sketch, but sometimes they are a bit um, picky or a bit fussy about how it looks. So try and do your best. I'm just going to do it again to make sure that it's proper. Sorry about that. It's not very easy with the tool that I have here. I'll try my best. So it goes through this point, and that point, and that point. So 
It's a quadratic. It looks like a quadratic. Okay, I suppose that will do. So that's y equals f of 2x. And there we have part A. Now part B um, says y equals fx plus p, where p is a constant and p is between 0 and 3. Okay, so now... Okay, so let's make a sketch. Well, first of all, let's think about this transformation. This transformation, okay, is something where, again, it's inside the function, so it's a horizontal, okay, and basically what's happened is it's moved negative p0. Remember we said it was inside the function, it acts kind of opposite or weird, so it's, you've got to add p to the x-coordinates, but the effect on the, sorry, you've got to add P to, you've got to change, you've got to replace the x with x plus p, but the effect is you're taking away p from the x-coordinates. That's the effect of it. So when you have x plus something, and we know p is positive between 0 and 3, so when you, when you add p to the, uh, when you, when you ch replace the x with x plus p, you have to subtract p from all the x-coordinates. Kind of do the opposite of, of what it is. If it was x minus p, you would add p to all the x-coordinates. Okay, so the x coordinates are affected, but in the opposite way. Just like when you have f2x, the x has been replaced by 2x, but you multiply the x coordinates by a half. Here you've got fx plus p, where p is something positive. So you have to um, take p away from all the x coordinates. So if we think about the x coordinates that we have from the original question, you have 0, 0, and 6, 0, and 3, minus 1. So you have 0, 0, and you have... 6, 0, and you have 3 and minus 1. Okay, those were the three points. Okay, so basically what we've got to do is we've got to take away p from all the x coordinates. So this is going to become um, 0 minus p, which is minus p and 0. And this is going to become 6 minus p and 0. And this is going to become 3 minus p and 0. Okay, now, they told us something important here, which is that P, its value is between 0 and 3. Okay, so if we look at the original function for a minute, if the value is less than 3, then this point, okay, let me just make a, a sketch over this. It's not very good, okay. All right, that's just to illustrate to you that this point, okay, it can't move more than three spaces. If we move three spaces, it'll end up at, at, on the y-axis. And we know that the value of p is, as I mentioned here, the value of p is between 0 and 3. So this turning point has to be somewhere in this region here. It can't have gone across to this side because p, its value, can't be more than 3. So that means it goes to the left, less than three spaces so the turning point will definitely be somewhere okay on um, the right of the y-axis so let's just make our axes um, so we have zero zero went to minus p zero which is over here somewhere okay and six zero went to uh, six minus p zero um, let me put this a bit more this side okay and the turning point is going to be somewhere over here let's call that minus 1 so that's going to be 3 minus p that's going to be the turning point so the curve will look like something like this Okay, it'll look something like this. This is y equals f x plus p with that condition. So this turning point, its coordinates are 3 minus p and minus 1. Sorry. What did I put 0 for? 
3 minus p and minus 1. Okay? 3 minus p and minus 1. So that's, uh, this is 6 minus p and 0. Six, and that's minus p and 0. So this point moved p spaces to the left. This point moved p spaces to the left. And so did the turning point. Okay? So there we have our coordinates um, of the points. And we have, I think we have completed the question. It says here, okay, show the coordinates of any points with the curve in six, the x-axis. Okay? The reason why it says only the x-axis, in this case, we can't find what this is because we don't know the equation of the curve. So we can't find the y intercept okay so there we have our solutions to this question number six